Hi, welcome to the second video of waves. So, um, we have done path difference and phase difference before already. Um, this one we're talking about standing waves or stationary waves. Standing waves is a very, very old-fashioned way of talking about stationary waves. But firstly, let's talk about how can stationary waves be formed. Stationary waves is formed because two waves are interacting with each other. What two waves? You've got one source, you've got one speaker or one vibrating column, and that can actually turn stationary waves. How? So you've got one speaker, or uh, let's say a speaker can do a stationary wave. What happens? It actually hits a wall, and the wall will reflect the waves back. These two waves interfere and they form stationary waves. So, our first point is that waves reflect. This is actually the first point. Just saying that it reflects is um, the second point. And reflects it wave superpose this is one of the few times that if you spell this wrong you will actually miss a mark of that and interfere with forward Um, and the fixed boundaries, minimus, min, minimus, are going to be notes, and these does not move. And then um, constructive points are going to be called empty notes. Okay, so let's recap. Forward wave interfere with reflected wave, interfere and superpose. So reflect is actually one point, superpose is one point. Um, and notes, these points does not move because when you add these two together, you get a wave like this, something like that, and it will flip up and down like this. And these are called notes because they don't move, and these are anti notes, which is at maximum. Okay, so this is basic, 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 basic of waves, and please, 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 whatever you do, these three points are the easiest questions the easiest mark that you can get in the exam. Um, the question will be like, how is the standing wave being formed? Is this violin? Or um, why is the standing wave being formed? Anything that's re remotely close to, why do you have maximums and minimums? And uh, uh, if you are, can identify the question that it's a standing wave, give them this answer. It's always correct. Okay? So, a little bit more features of standing waves. Let's look at this wave in here. When, uh, so, a lot of people will think that this is one wavelength. No, this is incorrect. This is not one wavelength. From this note to note, it is half a wavelength. Why? Because from here to here, this is one wavelength. Do you see the red and the purple? That is one wavelength. And between the notes, all points are in phase. What does that mean? That means that at this point and this point, this point, they are all moving downwards. This point, this point, this point, they are all moving upwards. They're the same point in their wave cycle. And this only happens with standing waves. So in here, 
this cycle will be different. So the phase difference between this cycle and this cycle is pi 180 degrees. They are antiphase. But in here, they are all in phase, which is the same cycle, uh, zero uh, phase difference. Okay, let's go through question one together. Stationary wave, uh, this is slide number two. Stationary waves are set up on a length of road on uh, fixed at both ends. Which of the following statements is true? So we uh, fix at both ends. Let's look at a wave like that. For example, that is a stationary wave between two ends. I'm not going to go through different stationary waves of different pipes with you guys because um, that, that is a little bit um, advanced and they don't actually test it as much. But if you want to, I can give you some uh, literature to, to, to go through. But well, let's focus on this first. Stationary waves are set up. Um, which of the statements is true? Let's go through D first. Particles of the rope at adjacent antinodes always move in the same direction. So they are saying that this point and this point, remember these are called nodes, these are called antinodes. They are all always move in the same direction. Let's look at this point. If, uh, if I eliminate this one first, at this point A, this point B, where is A going next? It is at the top. The only way we can go is down. B is at the bottom. The only way it can go is up. So A and B is always uh, going in opposite direction. So D is completely incorrect. C, nodes need not necessarily to be present at each end of the road. This is also incorrect because we know that if it's two fixed points, it's always a node. It can always present in this situation. So um, C has to be incorrect because this is always a node. B, the midpoint of the rope is always stationary. Ha, ah, mm, is it correct? This one, in this situation, yes, this situation is correct, but is this the only standing wave can be formed in here? No. I can form this standing wave, and I can also form this standing wave. This is our fundamental frequency, this first harmonic, this is second harmonic. Um, so in here, our um, standing wave, uh, in the, here midpoint is not stationary, so B is incorrect as well. A. Between adjacent nodes, particle of rope vibrates in phase with one another. We know that between this one, this one is node, this one is node, and here all particles move. If you are at the top, all particles move down. If you are at the bottom, all particles move up. They are all in phase with one another. So A is correct. Okay, so try question two, and uh, we are going to try question three together, okay? Okay, welcome back. Question three. It says two radio transmitter emit waves a frequency of 1.4 megahertz. A stationary wave is set up between the two transmitters due to the superposition of the radio waves. What is the minimum distance between two nodes of the stationary wave? What do we know? Between two nodes, uh, between nodes and nodes, it's always, this is always half lambda. So, if this is always half lambda, we know that um, B, we can use it B equals at lambda. Do we have root B? We do. Why? Because it's radio wave. Radio wave is EM wave. What do we know about EM waves? All EM waves traveling at the same speed. Three times 10 to 8 meters per second. Frequency is 1.4 times 10 to the 6. So, lambda is going to be um, that over that, so it's 214 meters. So, if lambda is 214 meters, we know that the distance between node and node is half lambda. So, 
we know that the distance is half lambda, so it's 214 meters divided by 2, so the distance is 107 meters instead. Okay? So, try question 3 and question 4, and we will go over, we'll go over question 5 in full, and afterwards, and also, ah, question 5 and question 6, and um, yeah, you can try the rest, but yeah, of this is a question, I'll come back to it. Hi, welcome back. So, um, slide five is um, about the standing wave question, um, but more importantly, it's a standing wave equation that your exam board really, really, really wants you to understand. Personally, I hate this equation, but because this equation is, there's lots of moving parts in this equation, but um, master it, yeah, master it. So the equation, uh, before I go over question five, let's recap this equation first. The equation is F equals one over two L T over mu. What is this equation? This, um, every single part of this uh, has a little bit of tip and tips and tricks to it. You 100% need to know every single one part in, in order for you to understand the question. Um, most of this will be altered um, depending on what the question is talking about. What am I talking about? Let's start with this one. This is the easiest one. This is tension. But think about tension. Where does tension come from? Tension usually comes from extension. Hmm. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Anyway. Um, all um, these three, you need, need, need to remember there. Okay, this is mass per meter. It is the mass per meter of the um, um, of the rope itself. Okay, so it's how many kg per meter? They might give you uh, the total uh, total mass of the rope and they, they, they might give you the length of rope so this is the first thing that you have to get yourself they really, really seldomly um, give you this this value itself you actually need to find it every single time you can't just substitute this number in I've never seen a question, well, much, much easier question, they will give it to you, but usually they, they won't. This is when you have a B, a B to A star question, they might not give you this direction. This is the frequency, it's the fundamental frequency. So that means that it's the first frequency, um, at the minimum frequency of a standing wave. Let's look at a different standing wave first. This standing wave, this standing wave, and this standing wave. This is fundamental, this is the first, this is the second. We are talking about this one, okay? So, if they give you the fund, uh, if they give you saying that, oh, this is my third standing wave, or uh, second, uh, second uh, harmonic standing wave. I'm saying that this is 330 hertz. Okay? This is frequency. So I will need to decrease it to our first frequency. So this is the third, this is the first, so 330 divided by 3. Okay? So let's say this is 660 hertz. How do you do it? This is 660. Okay, so this is going to be 220 hertz in this situation. But whatever happens, you need to use the fundamental frequency of um, the wave. Okay, you can't use of the standing wave or the stationary wave. 
You can't use this frequency, you can't use this frequency. So make sure the question is given you the fundamental frequency first. Otherwise, you need to divide the frequency that's higher than that. This only applies to a, a wave of two fixed ends. And they really, really seldomly ask you waves of not two fixed ends. Okay, last one here. This, they usually don't trick you on this, but this is the length of the two end points. Uh -huh. What is the difference between the length of two end points and the length of the rope? Mm, okay, let's look at this first. Is this the distance between two end points? Um, I don't think so because um, this is the length of the two end points. So, um, because you can see that the length, the rope is actually second, right? So, there's a difference between the length in here and length of rope. See, this is bendy, right? So, I've seen a question where actually that there's a question coming up and saying that um, the length of rope is, this is actually question six in here, the length of the rope is um, 0 0.91, but between A and B, is 0 0.66. You use this one instead, okay? You don't use length of rope. This L is the length of between the two end point, the two end node. Okay? It's not about the length of rope. It's about the length of two end point between A and B instead. Okay? Um, these are the really, really, really key points of this wave equation and a lot of the people a lot a lot lots of people do not understand each of this this is why it's a very very nasty equation and you think that it's just substitute everything in but no you need to check um, every single question first you need to check every single point that you're making is is a uh, right substitute the only thing that you kind of don't need to think about is tension but actually that there's a question in here that changes the tension as well so it's not easy let's try to make some progress on this uh, we are going to look at question 5 which is um, slide 5 of the um, um, uh, PowerPoint so 5a explain how a stationary wave is produced I'm not going to talk about it um, Go ahead. Alright, 5B is what we want to focus on. The vibrating length of one of the string of the violin is 0 0.33. When the tension on the string is 25 newtons, the string vibrates at a first harmonic frequency, um, a frequency of 370 hertz. So that the mass of 1.0 length of the string is about 4 times uh, 10 to the minus 4 it's actually a really, really nice question because it's laid out everything for you and they're actually asking for mu because it's mass per meter which is um, a mass per actually one one meter so it's actually a really, really easy question in this situation um, I think yeah this really, really easy question uh, but try it yourself anyway. 5C, determine the speed at which waves travel along the string. Um, in the question, when it vibrates with the first harmonic frequency of 370 uh, hertz. So fundamental is first harmonic. Um, it's, it's first harmonic is, is another word for fundamental frequency. Um, so, yeah, in here, um we this is just very very simple people set lambda and you are done with that
Okay, so the last one is the one that we really talked to you about. Uh, question D. Um, question D actually and needs you to think about every single one of this before you can actually um, before you can actually do the question. Let's start. It says that um, they gave you a graph between tension and extension. The strain with an initial tension of 25 newtons is vibrating on a frequency of 370 hertz. The diameter of circle, circular pack is 7.02 mm and is twisted, twisted 75 degrees. So for part B, firstly, what do you do? You find out how much extension is 75 degrees. So if you have a circle in here, and this is this is 45, this is around 75 degrees. So for 75 degrees, you need to find out how many mm is that. How do you do that? Um, you do 75 over 360, because it's how many cycles is it, times pi d over 2. This is going to give us our new extension. Actually, it is not going to give us a new extension, it's additional extension. Right, let's look back at the tension. Where does tension come from? Tension comes from extension. What, what I'm talking about, because F equals Kx. Whenever you have tension, it always comes from extension as well. So according to the graph, if you have 25 Newton before, 25 Newton on the graph corresponds to 11, 11 mm extension. Okay, so initially the extension is already 11 mm. Our new extension in here, um, it's, it's going to be this calculates into um, 4.5. Okay, so the new tension using the graph is going to be 35 newtons. Okay, so um, what, what am I talking about in here? Let's look at this first. Do I need to, uh, so I, I'm changing the tension. I'm going to keep this the same. We're finding F. Do I need to change L? No. Because L is the length of two end points. In this situation, the two end points will be the length of the string because the vibration is so small. Okay? So this is how you find tension. New tension. Any question D. Okay? Alright, this is all I want to talk to you about. Uh, question five. Pause this question one um, for a minute or two, do question five, and we'll go for question six together. Okay? Hello, welcome back. Um, this is the last question that we're going to do for standing wave or stationary wave. If you have any question, as usual, comments down below. Or um, we are going to go through that later later on, but question six is not easy. Question six is really not easy. But I think um, what I'm, I'm modeling with you is how do we think about questions like this? Question six um, is about a stationary wave because it's talking about guitar string. Whenever I talk about guitar, of course, it's going to talk about stationary wave, and it is vibrating at three point three three point. Frequency of 330 hertz. First thing, well, a uh, first thing to think about is number one, if we have an equation in here, is this the first fundamental frequency? Is it the first harmonic? It's not the first harmonic. Mm. So we need to change this 330 hertz to something else. And how many lambda is that? 
And we'll talk about this a little bit later. But 6a, state the phase relationship between point A and point B. They are at different parts of the wave. Within this, the state is zero, uh, phase difference is zero, but within this, the set phase difference is zero. But at A and B, they're opposite phase. Okay, so they're antiphase. Whenever your antiphase is 180 degrees or pi, because it's one half a cycle ahead. Um, if you don't understand that, please go back to your textbook and have a look. Um, uh, as we talk about, uh, or I'll rewind down the video into earlier when we talk about phase difference um, of different parts of standing wave. Okay, 6B, point X and Y, this is X, this is Y, are 0.66 meters apart. Calculate the speed of the wave on the string. We have got V equals F lambda. We have got F, okay? We need to find V. What do we need? We need lambda. How many lambda is that? It's one and a half lambda, and one and a half lambda in total is going to be going to zero point six six. So with that, you can find out lambda and you can find out v. What I really want to talk to you about is question six c. Question six c. Question six c. The total mass of string is mass is going to be equal to 3.1 grams and the total length of the string is 0 0.91 meters show the tension on the string when the sounding harmonic shown in the diagram above is 70 newtons so t is 70 newtons show the tension so we don't know this we are showing this okay so the question only um, the equation only works if this is first harmonic of fundamental frequency. So in this situation, it's three hundred and thirty. So this is the third harmonic, or um, it's the third iteration of this wave can be. The first one looks something like this. So F is going to be uh, the first harmonic of fundamental. It's going to be three hundred and thirty. 330 divided by 3, so it's 110 hertz. So in order for us to use this equation, we need to divide it by 3 first. So F is actually 110 instead of 330, because we need to get the fundamental frequency of first harmonic of the wave um, situation. Okay, so this is the first pitfall that you use 110. Root t over mu. Mu is the second pitfall. Do we use these two? No. We need what is mu? Mu is mass per meter. That means that I need to do 3.1 times 10 to the minus 3 because it's in grams. Another pitfall over the meter, which is 0 0.91, which goes into there. The third thing that we need to talk about is what is L? L is the length of the two end points. In the question, they say to you the length of the strength is 0 0.91, that's the length of strength. And they are saying X and Y is 0 0.61. Which of this are we going to use? Not this one. We're actually using this one instead. So, in this situation, it is very, 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 very important for us to know the entire equation, which is very, very difficult. So in here, we use 0 0.61 instead. And this is how you calculate tension. It's not easy, but this actually utilizes every single one of this um, um, idea. Okay? Okay. Hi, okay, so this is the end of the, our uh, stationary wave or standing wave. If you do not understand any of one of these, um, comments down below or come, come to face to face, we will have a Zoom meeting as well at some point. But um, yeah, try it, answer all the questions, and try.
try to do it. Okay?